Orko. Shut the fuck up, just shut the fuck up, Orko. This is He-Man, Power of Grayskull on the Game Boy Advance. Oh, ha, 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 Orko, what did I just say? This handheld He-Man game was based off of the 2002 animated series. I've never watched it because I'm an adult, and was an adult at the time. The show was distributed by Mattel and NBC Universal Television, and debuted on the Cartoon Network. As always, it was released as a tie-in with a new toy line because, well, it's He-Man. Look, if you like the show, that's fine. I really have no opinion on it, because I don't care to. We're here to take a look at the video game this incarnation spawned, so let's get into it. Pretty cool how Orko keeps interrupting the action in this thing, am I right? I mean, this was a thing back then. Walk two steps, get told how to do, what to do, when to do, and why. I don't miss this element from games of the era, just in case you were wondering. So, this was developed by Tiniko, which is apparently a traditional weaving technique that the indigenous tribes of the Maori people practiced. Evidently, it's also the title of a game studio that created three... Um... Dude, Orko, seriously, we get it. Tanico made three games, or two and a half, if you discount their retro arcade classics project. TDK Mediactive published this thing, and they would go out of business a year later in 2003. So far, we're off to a pretty great start, am I right? He-Man Power of Grayskull is repetitive, irritating, and kinda ugly, though the latter is admittedly subjective. It's a simple game delivered from an isometric perspective. Hack this, slash that, jump, collect, and most importantly, have all of these things get constantly interrupted. Orko and friends just don't want you to have a good time. They are always interrupting your flow, man. Like, let me be me, man. I'm he, man. Piss off. The game is a bit of a fetch quest. Evidently, all of your he pals can't take care of themselves, because you'll need to retrieve a bunch of their sorry asses through repetitive stages with contrived plot details. Let me just get straight to the point. This is a cash grab title. It was released the same year as the cartoon, and we know what Mattel is all about, right? Cynical? Maybe. Realistic? Definitely. There's just not a lot to sink your teeth into here. As a game, it functions, but then again, so do my internal organs after years of substance abuse. So, there you go. It works, but not well. First of all, the hit detection ranges from somewhat competent to abysmal. Dude. Dude. Hit him. Dude, hit him. Why won't you hit him? It's a dice roll when it comes to whether or not you'll do damage to regular enemies, and the bosses are even more of a gamble. The big bads have specific patterns to learn, but you're better off just cheesing them because, again, it's impossible to reliably do damage. Out of all of them, I'd say that the Merman encounter is the best. This skirmish switches things up a bit by forcing you to seek out pools of water throughout the stage. Destroy the orb, and he'll move to another region. It isn't great, but at least it's different. Monsters and geysers spew poison, which slows you down and prohibits you from jumping, which is annoying. There are timed gates triggered by skulls, which are frustrating, and there's a circular bar to indicate your attack charge. He-Man can destroy shit to get defensive and offensive buffs, but there aren't any permanent upgrades, so the combat gets old real fast. The entire game is built up of disjointed vignettes, seemingly only tethered by their need to cram in as many characters from the cartoon and toy line as possible. Buy the toys. Watch the show. Play the game. Mattel. The trifecta. A new kinda low. As for the gameplay, you can jump and attack with the A and B buttons, respectively. R blocks. L sprints. The 
problem is that the game is always tossing enemies at you that take no less than 7,392 hits to kill, which makes the entire adventure feel like a slog. It's not a short game either. An acclimated player will still be here for an hour at least, and while there are some faster paced pseudo shooter style sequences, you'll likely get bored by stage 4. The controller inputs are responsive, but the isometric perspective often makes it difficult to aim He-Man in the proper direction. If you aren't precise, he will just do nothing and the muddy, putrid art style doesn't do you any favors. It's hard to land tight jumps and this perspective in most games just sucks. Yeah, this is purely my opinion and I said most games. Not all. The stages are linear, which is fine, but the designers sort of play with you a bit here. They want you to feel like you're playing a better game. The way the levels are designed is artificially appealing, like you'll see locked gates and a few traps and think, hey, my He-Man is open to do as he pleases, but no, ultimately every stage is a bit of a guinea pig playpen. They wanted you to feel like you were solving a puzzle or inhabiting an open arena, but it all boils down to grabbing arbitrary items and slamming your sword into the set pieces. It's as vapid and bland as my childhood Battle Cat figure. He-Man, Battle Cat, now with less than one point of articulation. Mattel! When the game isn't boring you to death with its mediocrity, it is sending you out on crystal collecting missions and the aforementioned bland shooter stages. They are what they are, and this is a video, so if what you see appeals to you, buy the game. Alistair Brimble did the music here, and it's honestly the most creative thing about this entire package. That is, unless you're fighting anything, and you'll be fighting everything all of the time. In these skirmishes, the music gets drowned out by repetitive sound effects. Good job, game. Wash the only thing that captivates me from this experience. This is what you get when you rush something out the door to coincide with the launch of your other He products. Fuck you, Orko. He-Man Power of Greyskull isn't terrible. I mean, it works most of the time, if you can forgive the hit detection. But it's also shallow, soulless, and arduous. I hope that paints a picture. Seriously, don't spend much more than a favor for this thing, and by that I mean a PG Disney rated favor, like killing a spider for a friend, or offering a homeless person a coffee that you stole or didn't spend money on. Don't fondle a stranger just because they looked sad and asked you to, or go out of your way to do anything strenuous to add this thing to your collection. It doesn't deserve it, and it sure as hell isn't doing you any favors. All games are products, but this game is a product, if you catch my drift. Next time on this channel, something completely different. <laughs> This is pretty much the worst video ever made.